Okay guys, what's going on? Swade here with another tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be upgrading my current PC, which is an AMD 4300. And we're going to be using an X79 motherboard paired with a Xeon E52670 processor. And I've also bought a CIT Storm case as well. Uh, you can pick this whole kit up second hand for about £247, UK, um, US dollars. I'm hoping this will be a nice little upgrade. Uh, we're going to be pairing that with the E52670 processor, which has a base frequency of 2.60 gigahertz and a turbo frequency of 3.3 gigahertz and a massive 20 megabyte of cache. I've heard good and bad things about these motherboards. This one is the X79Z version 2.4e. Okay, onto the build. Now, first things first, we've got to install the back plate, which comes with the motherboard. And that should just snap into place like that. But sometimes these cases are a bit flimsy and they don't always fit straight away, but a little bit of fiddling and it should just snap in place. Okay, now that's done, we're going to install the processor. Now if you look closely, there's a little like triangle on the corner. You've got to make sure that that goes in the same position, which is marked on the top plate as a triangle, so make sure that goes, in my case, is up. But on the top plate, you sh it should be clearly marked, so you can't really go wrong. Okay, once you've got that in position, you've just got the two clips. Sometimes you've got to jiggle like the top plate around just to get it to seat nicely. Next step, I'm going to be installing RAM from my old build, which is some crucial ballistics memory. It's DDR3. 1600 megahertz RAM. I've got three sticks, so it's going to be 12 gig going in here. Make sure you get it the right way around, of course. And it should just snap into place. You should hear a click. Okay guys, now you have that. That's the RAM installed and the processor. Next stage, we're going to be installing the cooler. This is the Raging Tech, as I said earlier, available from Amazon, about 18 pounds. Got some good reviews, so I thought I'd go with that. Okay, next stage, we're going to be installing some thermal paste. Uh, I roughly use the size of a pea, small ball as you can see here in the video. And next stage I just like to smooth that out with the credit card. Just to cover the whole area in a nice thin layer. Okay, and there you have it, job done. Next stage, we're going to be mounting these screw-in posts to mount the cooler to. 
and you just screw on all four corners of the top plate there a little bit fiddly Okay, next stage we're going to be mounting these two side plates. Just to make sure that little centre um, sort of post is pointing outwards. Now I'm mounting my cooler so it actually blows to the exhaust side of the case, so any air will get expelled from the um, case van. And using these nuts. They just screw on top of the top plate you just installed. Nice and simple. Just make sure these are all finger tight. Okay, next stage we're going to be installing the cooler. Just make sure you remove this little sticky label on the bottom. Now the other little piece you'll need is a small little plate. basically just fixing the two holes that you've got on the bottom of the cooler and this basically will be fastened down with two screws Okay, next step, inside the, the kit you get with the cooler, you'll see these little posts and screws. If you just screw these into these plastic posts. is quite fiddly to be honest. And there you have it, that's the cooler installed. Okay next stage we're going to be putting the motherboard into the case. As you can see you've got mounts here on the case you should have six mounts just make sure they correspond to the holes you've actually got on your motherboard so you may have to move them depending on if you've got like a larger ATX so just bear that in mind make sure there's nothing shorting out on the board on the bottom okay just remove this and carefully position the motherboard on top of the post you've got there make sure the holes line up and also you've got to push it into the back plate okay next stage we're going to be installing the power supply I'm currently using one from my old system, which is a 500 watt supply.
and just install the screws into the into the back there as as you can see It's a little bit awkward because I'm trying to avoid the camera. <laughs> Once you've got them all fastened in place, the next stage will be installing the graphics card. Now this is also a card from my other system. This is um, a Radeon HD7850, which is quite an old card now, to be honest. Um, but as I don't gain that much, it should run all the titles I need. It's a two gig card. Now on this motherboard, you'll see there's a white clip to the right hand side. This, this needs to be pulled to the right to allow the card to be fitted. Okay, and once you've, once it's all seated home, you can do up the graphics card with your screw. Then just install the cover plate on the back there. there. Should be two little screws. Okay, once you've done up your last screw, gonna be installing the power connector, the 24 pin. Clearing some cables out of the way. Now on the 24 pin connector there's a little clip. So just make sure you, you plug that in the right way around. Just be careful here as well because sometimes you can bend the motherboard when you're actually pushing the clip in so just support the motherboard on the bottom with your, with your fingers. Okay next stage we're going to install the SATA 3 cable which just goes at the top there now just another tip I, d I did run into a slight problem here because one of the cables um, one of the 8 pin power cables that goes to the motherboard has to be rooted behind my graphics card because it just wasn't long enough so as you can see here I'm removing the card again just to fit the wire up there as you can see so that's just a tip there make sure you put that wire that power cable first install that first in the motherboard before you install your graphics card Okay, one of the final jobs now is to install the two six pin uh, graphics card connectors. And then the last job is to install the power reset hard drive light. You can't really go wrong with these because it is actually marked on the actual motherboard sides plus and minus
Okay guys, we're nearly finished. It's just a case now of tidying up the wires. Make sure there's nothing getting in the way, nothing hitting fans, anything like that. The last job just to put the side side casing on. And there we have it. Budget Xeon build. And hopefully this can be a lot better than my old FX forty three hundred. Probably going to install some case lights and some LED fans, that kind of thing. Right now, I'll have to wait and fire this up and see how it goes. So stay tuned, guys, for the next video. Where I'll hopefully be showing this all up and running and benchmarking a few games and comparing it to my old AMD system. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.